I'm Insomniac and this is the Pagani Design Model PD1664. First of all, I'd like to give a big shout out to Tony for sending this in. He actually sent in quite a few watches you're going to see coming up soon on the channel. If you have anything you want to see reviewed on this channel, email me at shoulditimethis at gmail.com and I will let you know where to send the watches. They'll be reviewed in short and sent back. So before I get into all the sections that you see in all my reviews, let's get one thing out of the way here. This is a copy of a Rolex 116509, I believe it is, Daytona. So yes, it looks exactly like it. It's a homage piece, if you will. It's not even similar. It's pretty much a clone of this watch here. I'll put a picture of the Pagani over here for comparison. Somewhere They'll be somewhere here on screen, but as you can see, it's basically the same thing. So during the conclusion, I will probably get into whether or not this is a decent copy of that specific watch, but don't everybody lose your minds. I know there's a lot of Rolex fans. I'm not comparing the literal quality of this Pagani design to an actual Rolex Daytona, but because this is literally a copy of that watch, at least aesthetically, there are gonna be a lot of comparisons. Okay, let's get into the watch. The case on this piece is a mix of pretty good and pretty confusing. We'll start with the pretty good. First of all, the dimensions are perfect on my standard seven inch wrist. A neat 40 millimeters and fairly thin, so it sits well and feels comfortable on top of the wrist. Design wise, I really don't have to comment on anything here with the exception of two small things that I'll mention towards the end of this section. The case is the same shape and layout as the 116509 Rolex Daytona. The finishing here is a mix of brushed and stainless, the tops of the lugs and sides of the case, and crown and button surfaces as well as the lip around the case back are all polished while the underside of the case is brushed. The quality of the finishing is typical for a watch at this price point. At a general distance it looks great while up close it's decent but not impressive. The bezel on this piece is actually impressive aesthetically. You have engraved white filled numerals and lines for the tachymeter scale over a mirrored dark backdrop which at a glance actually does look like ceramic. The Pagani site doesn't tell you what the bezel material is, but I'm sure given the price point that it's just steel like the rest of the case, but well done on the finishing there. The crown and pushers are the right proportions for this watch, the knurling on the locks for the pushers, and the crown is grippy enough to actually be usable. The pushers have a good definitive click to them when using the chronograph, and the crown even has an embossed Pagani logo on it. On to the case back, and here's where we get into the two confusing parts of this case. You'll notice that in the center of this screw down case back that there's a starfish. Why? This isn't a dive style watch, it isn't the Pagani logo, and it isn't a tribute to the back of the real Daytona, so what's it there for? Next on the confusing list are these fake partial lengths between the tops of the lugs. And yes, you'll notice that I said tops of the lugs. These aren't actually links. They're a solid, non-removable part of the case, and they're not lug deep. In fact, the strap that's on here is literally mounted below these lug things. Not only is that an odd choice being that there are no partial lugs left on the actual Daytona when you remove the bracelet, but it's an inconvenient choice for anybody who might have wanted to grab one of these and go full Daytona clone by slapping on an oyster style bracelet. You can't. Not sure why they would do this. Overall though, it's a pretty nice case. The dial on this watch is actually the most surprising thing about this piece. It's actually a nice dial, both individually and as a proper Daytona replica. With the exception of the width of the hour markers, the addition of a date window, and a slightly different set of functions for the chrono dials, and obviously the lack of any Rolex branding, it's actually a good looking Daytona clone. Starting with the base of the dial, you have a faint radial brushed silver backdrop, which actually plays with light very well depending on how you move the watch. There's a small printed fifth second track around the outer edge of the dial, which has larger printed indices for the minutes. Below that, you have fairly tall polished hour markers with loom fillings, and down at 4.30 you have a date window. Below the 12 o'clock index, you have the Pagani Design logo and brand, then chronograph and sport with Japan movement printed at the bottom of the dial. Your sub-dials are all flat gray with a nicely done concentric circular pattern, all topped with white printing for their respective functions. 
The subdial at 6 o'clock is a running second hand for the main time, while the subdial at 9 o'clock counts minutes for the chronograph, and your subdial at 3 o'clock is a 24 hour indicator for the main time. Last but not least, we have the hands. They're a solid replica of actual Daytona hands, all polished in the same shape as Daytona hands, but maybe a tad thinner. They're even the correct length for this dial, which is nice. The polish is pretty good on all the hands, and you have loom filling inside the hour and minute hands. As I said in the beginning of this section, for the price of this piece, and for a Daytona clone, it's a pretty nice dial. You have three usable complications on this piece, the most obvious being the chronograph. It's a simple minutes and seconds setup. The main second hand on the dial counts the seconds down to a fifth second, generally. The chronograph engages with a good positive click, and resets instantly with a kind of flyback reset. The only thing I don't love about this chronograph is the lack of individual indices on the minute subdial. Depending on where the hand stops between every 5 minute mark, you kind of have to squint at it to try to figure out which minute you're on. Next you have the 24 hour indicator at 3 o'clock, which is straightforward enough if the hand is on the right side of the dial it's AM, if it's on the left side it's PM. Last you have the date window, black numeral on a white disc. The numerals are large enough to read at a quick glance, which is useful, so overall you do have some decent usable complications on this piece. The loom on this watch is actually fairly poor. Obviously this is partially due to the fact that the hands and indices are pretty thin so there isn't much surface area to fill with loom. But even beyond that, this is the loom with a direct full charge. It isn't very bright, doesn't last very long, and it doesn't pick up standard indoor light very well at all. I wasn't even sure that this watch actually had loom until I purposely charged it with a close-up light source. So it has loom, but it's not very good. Timing to glance on this watch is pretty solid. You have a decent contrast between the hands and backdrop, you really don't have too much clutter despite the sub dials and date window, and the hands are a perfect length reaching all the way out to the minute track. The small minus here is how small the indices are for the individual minutes. If you want to know the exact minute, you do have to really get an eyeball up in there to see where it's pointing. The strap on this watch is a mix of excellent and confusing, kind of like the mix signals with the case, the mix of Rolex Daytona and that take me for a swim starfish on the case back. Let's start with the good. It's a thick rubber strap with plenty of length and has a handsome brushed steel buckle with the Pagani logo on it. It's very comfortable on the wrist throughout the day and the free loops hold the excess strap in place perfectly. The holes for strap sizing are spaced fairly close together which helps you set a perfect feel on the wrist rather than a little bit too loose or a little bit too tight. And this strap has a quick release so you don't have to use any tools to remove it. The confusing part is why a rubber strap? It's not like I've never seen a Daytona on a rubber strap before but the thick rubber strap along with that starfish on the case back scream dive watch yet they're both on a crystal clear Rolex Daytona clone and yes you can swim in this watch, just like you can swim in an actual Daytona, but it almost seems like these two things put a bit of emphasis on wet capabilities, which to me, sends mixed signals aesthetically. Last but not least, we have value. As of the time of this review, Pagani has this watch listed on their site for $99.99, and I've actually seen it on other sites listed for under $100. At that price, I have to tell you, this watch is actually an excellent value. Now keep in mind, you have to be okay with wearing a literal Rolex Daytona clone, but if you love the Daytona aesthetic and have a limited budget, it's a handsome watch with an accurate movement and a good weighty build quality that actually looks and feels good on the wrist. For the price, in the world of Daytona clones anyway, it's actually really good. Another thanks to Anthony for sending this in. Much appreciated. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I have a lot more watch reviews coming up. Luckily, uh, we will be picking up the pace over here should I time this. So make sure you hit the subscribe button. And I will see you all at the next one.